And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're going to be talking about Ground Floor, which is a new game that's coming from Tasty Minstrel Games, and you might know them from such games like Eminent Domain and Belfort. And if you know anything about Tasty Minstrel Games is they have a very specific style of games that involve a lot of in-depth thought and strategy, and Ground Floor is basically one of these. And Ground Floor, you will have a startup business that you are trying to take and make bigger and better. And that is the course of this game. And in some ways and fashions, it's a worker placement game, although not technically, and I'll show you that in a moment, but there's different resources that you're collecting to accomplish your goals to have a great, wonderful, successful business. Now remember as you look at this game that the components you're seeing are a prototype version, so this is not the final thing. Um, some of the stuff might be final, like artwork and such, but nothing set in stone. But this will give you a good idea of what the game is going to look like. Okay, there's a lot to look at as this game progresses. You have a large board here. Uh, you have a pile of pieces you can see over here. And in this pile of pieces, you're going to have two basic resources. You have info, the little file folders you can see here, and then you have money. And then there's also these goods resources that you'll be able to get over the course of the game. Now, before we take a look at the big board, we want to take a look at your smaller board. This is your company. At the beginning of the game, you will take a ground floor and place it there. See how that slides right into there? So here, a retail with a storage specialty. And you have six rooms on your ground floor that you'll be using as the game progresses. And you can upgrade those as the game goes by, but you will get at least one of them to start out with. Like, for example, I start with a storage closet here because I have the storage specialty, and that is mine. As the game progresses, you will be adding floors to your company, and this, each floor will give you special abilities, and they also give you points. As you can see uh, there, this floor here will give you five points, and when I upgraded this room down here, that gives me points, and you have a chance to upgrade all your rooms. There are also specialty rooms that you can get as the game progresses that can be placed on some of the floors, or they can be placed in place of one of your rooms down here at the bottom. Now, over here is an important track, and this shows how many employees you have. At the beginning of the game, it's just you, but you can get more employees. As you get more employees, you're going to get more of these discs. These are time discs that you will use over the course of the game. But you'll get less money. You can see here, with one employee, I will get $9 per turn, but then I have four time discs to work with. If I go up to two employees, I will get three more discs to put out on the board, but I only get $6 per turn. All the way up to... Look how many discs you get with five players, I mean with five employees, but then you actually lose three dollars. Now, the game takes place over nine rounds, although the rounds are split into three different phases because there's basically different buildings that you can buy in each of these. And there's also a job market up here that shows how many employees are available for people to, to buy. And then there's a popularity track where each player is going to have a disc from their company. And that's going to show how popular you are over the course of the game. And popularity basically lets you go first, which is a big deal. Now, the main thing from each round, and there's a, a few things going on, like collecting income and hiring somebody from the job market. But the main thing are taking these discs and placing them on the board. In a sense, it's a worker placement game, but you may need to put multiple of them out. Now, I can place them on my own board, these discs, and use the different rooms down here. In fact, I can use these rooms as many times as I want to. Uh, so let's take a closer look at, at some of these rooms here. Uh, you can see here that I can trade in three discs or place three discs to take a cube. And so that is something that I can do and no one else can stop me. I can do it as many times as I want as long as I have discs or I can trade in two discs to train someone and add another employee. But the upgraded version of every room, so like for example here, instead of trading in two discs, now I only trade in one disc. The storage closet actually isn't a special ability, it's just you can keep one cube there, but once I have the storage closet upgraded version, I can have two cubes. I can trade a, a disc in for information, I can trade a disc in for networking, I can trade in a disc in a cube, 
to get three information for research and, and testing. And those are different things that I can do. And, and again, they can be upgraded. But you can also place your disks out here. And these disks out here will do different things. And I'm not going to get into complete detail on these, but I wanted to talk about several of them. Over here, the consulting firm, when you put your people here, it costs money. And you get really nothing in initially, your piece will move over, but if someone else puts their piece there and then theirs moves over, you get 10 information. So you basically are have a meeting here at the consulting firm, but it, there's a possibility nobody else will pay the following turn and then you don't get your information. Of course, you can do it yourself uh, and, and, and form a loop, but you're paying money each time to get information. Over here is the advertising agent, which costs one dollar and one information to put them in there. Once you put these disks in here, you'll be able to convert them to networking print or broadcast. Uh, broadcast costs even more money, but can provide you lots of popularity, while network is the cheapest and the easiest to do, but it doesn't provide you with nearly as much popularity, and so you'll be able to put these here. Over here, each player will have one disk as the game progresses, and you will get a marketing bonus based on how popular you are. Everybody gets one, except for the most, the least popular person. Then here in the warehouse, you have a chance to buy these cubes for money or for information. The cubes are really important, especially here in the factory, because you can give up a cube, $2, and two information to put one of your discs here. And then you'll be able to send that disc to the retail outlet and sell it for different prices. You can choose your price, but choosing your price is all going to depend on the economic forecast. At the very top here, you can see we have a pile of cards. And the economic forecast can be stable, it can have it be a recession, it could be an economic boom, or it can be a depression. Each of these you'll see what's coming, but you don't know the exact numbers on it until you turn it over each turn. And then you'll see, depending on how many players are in the game. So in this game, let's say there's a five player game, two people are going to buy during a depression, but four of them are unemployed. Well, during a boom in a five-player game, seven people are going to buy, and only one's going to be unemployed. Unemployed can be handy because they'll go over here to the job market, bringing down the price to hire new employees. But the people are only going to buy so many goods, and they start with the smaller income brackets. They buy the cheaper goods first, and if there's a, you know, uh, you're not sure who's to buy first, then they buy from the most popular company. So advertising certainly helps here, and so this is one of the main ways to get money. And then I would argue this is one of the biggest parts of the game, the construction company, where you can pay and you can buy more floors to put in your building, or you can buy smaller special rooms that, again, can replace one of the rooms in your building. Or, for example, this empty floor here has the spot to put two more of those special rooms in. Now, each floor costs more and more money to put in. The first one is going to cost you $4 and four information, then the next one's going to cost you six dollars and six information but the, but it that's the focus of the game is to get these in here because as time goes by you can only buy a couple of these floors during the first major part of the game but during the second third of the game you can buy m many many more and in the third part you can buy all the buildings and each one is going to give you different amounts of points and that's how you win the game but they also give you special abilities you can see here these are investors and you actually can't build two of the same room, so let's throw a different form here. But this investor gives you five extra or three extra income per turn. The IT department gives me four extra information per turn. But they also, some of these rooms can give you, like this one here, an assembly line, which allows me to change one of my time disks into a cube. And so what you're going to have to do is work at getting your building built up and adding new and unusual things that will give you special abilities, but also that will give you points as the game progresses. The game is over after nine rounds or after someone builds their building up to uh, five levels or six when you include the ground four. And whoever has the most points win. You can convert money and information to points at the end of the game. The majority of points are going to come from the rooms and the fours that you have put into your factory. So you can see that it's not a worker placement, it's a time placement in a sense where you're using these disks. And what this does is it offers you some really interesting choices as the game progresses. What I can do is I can add the number of workers and have tons of these disks that I can place all over the place, but I'm 
really hurting myself financially and hopefully I can get enough money to, to, to do these. The game starts out a little slow as you're kind of starting to build, but halfway through the game, it really snowballs and there's so much going on, especially what kind of floors you add to your building is really going to change your strategy. Like, for example, in, in one game I was able to produce stuff in-house, and so I didn't need to go out and get cubes and, and use money and information. I just needed to use my time disks in my house to get these cubes, and so I was able to produce those. But it's also an interesting game because the interaction between the players is, a, is more than you might think. I, I told you about those meetings in the beginning where you need someone else to come in, but also when you sell the goods, how many people are selling goods? What kind of, is it going to be a recession? And like, for example, you'll see in a recession in a four player game, you'll sell one to three goods. Well, okay, hopefully we'll sell two goods going on at this point in time. So should I try to sell my good at the highest price? Because if you don't sell your goods, they drop and sometimes you're forced to liquidate them. And there were goods that I tried to sell for a very high price and eventually ended up selling for much lower than that simply because my company wasn't as popular as others. And that's what's interesting about this game is that there's really, you, you, you can't do everything so you have to focus. Am I going to put a lot of money into the advertisement to get my popularity up, which lets me sell my goods first and put my discs on the board first? You know, everything's kind of focused on those buildings, but I need money, I need information. How am I going to go about getting the different ways? And so uh, just from the few playings that I've had in it, I can see how there's going to be quite a few options as the game progresses. There's going to be uh, multiple ways that you can take, like you can concentrate on producing stuff and selling it, or you can concentrate on being popular, or you, you know, there's, do I want to get a lot of information? Do I want to get a lot of money? Do I try to get both? Which of the rooms will you upgrade? Because you can upgrade any of those rooms for a free action, but it costs you money and information to do so. And if you're going to replace one of those rooms with one of the special rooms, what are you going to replace? And so there's, there's, a, there's really a lot going on, and some of the actions cost more for the first person to do them, so there could be a little bit of a chicken game going, are you going to do that action so I can take it cheaper, and you know, how long am I going to wait, when are the resources going to come in, and I think this is really going to appeal to people who like a heavier style uh, worker placement game, uh, because there's just so much going on involved in it, and yet it all comes together, and it does make sense thematically. It, from the building of the building, the visual effect there, to the money and information and trading money for information and building prototypes and such. It has some neat ideas. The actual things that you are building and selling are abstracted to some degree, but at the same time, I don't think that matters at this point. So check it out. Well, I'll show you the link in just a moment where you can go and kickstart this game, Ground Floor.